This is Ria. Welcome to Little Stories for Tiny People. Our story today explores taking chances in the face of uncertainty. It is filled with unknowns and fog, and it might give you a sense of not really having firm footing, just like our main character. That is all by design. So huddle beneath your weighted blanket and let yourself sink into this atmospheric story. It's called The Bridge. Take it away, Hannah. Now remember, there are no pictures. You have to imagine the pictures in your mind. You can imagine the pictures however you want. Okay, here we go. The bridge appears overnight. The animals find it at dawn as daytime creatures creep from their sleeping quarters, blinking in the early light. One intrepid chipmunk thrills his friends by scampering just a couple of paw steps onto the bridge. It shakes under his weight. The chipmunk scrambles back onto solid ground, giggling wildly, thrilled and terrified in equal measure. The animals live by a cliff It has a very steep, vertical drop into a canyon. There is nothing beyond the cliff. You cannot climb down. From birth, animals learn to stay well away from the edge. The expanse of the canyon is often impossible to see due to the thick fog. The fog is so thick that when creatures widen their eyes, Trying to see what lies at the other side of the gorge, it is as if it vanishes part of the way across the chasm into an impenetrable cloud. Sasha is a young squirrel who lives with her two brothers in a tree that overlooks the canyon. She is curious, and she likes to nose her way around the area, learning all she can. Her curiosity has always centered around her home, her side of the canyon. Until she sees the bridge on that first day, she has never considered what lies beyond the canyon. But as soon as she sees it, fashioned out of untold lengths of rope with thin slats of wood, she does consider it. By midday, the bridge becomes quite the spectacle. Creatures of all kinds poke their heads out of their hiding spots to get a look. Allow me to describe it fully. The bridge is no more than eight inches wide, the perfect size for a woodland creature. Made of rope and wood, it is tied into place near the edge of the cliff. It extends out from there, reaching over the chasm of the canyon, and then into the fog. Judging by the fact that it is suspended in the air, swaying in the wind, it can be assumed that the other side of the bridge reaches the other side of the canyon, but you cannot see the other side. Sasha creeps as close as she dares, a few feet from the edge of the cliff, and squints into the fog. Huh, it's no use. There's nothing to see. The bridge is swallowed up into the mist. A shiver runs through her tail, even though the day is warm. Where do you think it goes? asks a beetle nearby. It must go across. Where did it come from? Someone must have built it. Hmm. Some of the more proactive animals, beavers from the lake, carry a great pile of sticks 
and set it down at the entry of the bridge to block it off. They erect a sign that says, Danger, no access. The warning sits there, undisturbed for a few days, but slowly over time, and no one is quite sure how, the pile of sticks diminishes. The sign is taken down. No one puts it back up. No one, not the beavers, who shrug at this development, not any of the creatures, are quite sure what to do. The bridge soon looks open for business. A week after the bridge's appearance, a pack of raccoons decide to cross it. Raccoons are solitary animals tending to be happy on their own, but they do have their clubs. These raccoons are part of an adventure club. They often go on hikes and other interesting outings. On a Tuesday in late winter, their adventure takes them onto the bridge. The woodland creatures gather to watch them. They try to look brave, then take deep breaths and scramble onto the bridge. It shakes, swinging back and forth. Two of the raccoons yelp and dart back onto solid ground. The remaining four, fear painting their features, all stop scampering and wait for the bridge to settle. Then they carry on. Sasha and the rest of the animals watch them with big eyes as they make their way on the shaky bridge. After a brief time, they vanish into the fog. Gasps go up among the animals. <gasps> they should turn back. What will become of them? Who knows where it leads? There could be dragons. After a time, the other animals amble away, shaking their heads. Sasha remains, watching after the raccoons for a long while, sensing some new feeling building within her. As the days pass, more daring creatures set out on the bridge. Each time, it sways with their little footfalls, and they catch themselves on the rope, panting. Some turn back immediately. Eh, too shaky. Others turn back later, after they've entered the fog. I couldn't see anything in there. It is a Thursday morning when Sasha takes her first paw step onto the bridge. Her brothers are not thrilled about it. Sasha, just wait a few weeks. We'll go with you once spring comes. I want to go now. No one knows where it leads. That's why I want to go, she says, honesty bubbling up from who knows where. They sigh. <sighs> They reason it's better to go in a group, but ever since Sasha had seen the bridge, she has known deep down she would have to cross it. Bridges don't just appear out of nowhere all the time, especially bridges across an enormous canyon. What if she loses her chance? What if the bridge disappears overnight, vanishing? as quickly as it arrived. How could she ever forgive herself for missing her opportunity? So, on a Thursday morning, Sasha steps afoot onto the bridge. There are other animals ahead of her that day, and the bridge shakes with everyone's little steps. Whoa! Sasha instantly understands why other creatures turned back so quickly. She is used to leaping from tree branch to tree branch. Branches move, of course, dipping low under her weight. But with trees, there is always the solidness of the trunk and the roots 
giving even the slimmest of branches a foundational sturdiness on which a squirrel can rely. There is nothing sturdy about the bridge. It is just rope and wood constructed by some unknown creature not born of the earth itself like a reliable tree. Beneath Sasha is a cavernous abyss. She tries not to look down. Instead, she turns back and smiles weakly at her brothers. They wave, weakly, back, and she is off. Her heart is in her throat as she makes her way. With every gust of wind, the bridge feels like it might snap. She continues on, putting one paw step ahead of the other, feeling dozens of animals' eyes on her, until she enters the fog. It is like being inside a cloud. It dawns on her, then, what she's gotten herself into. She is on a very narrow, very shaky rope bridge, above a cavity in the earth that would be happy to swallow her up. She has no idea if she can make it to the other side. And what will be there if she does? Sasha's mind wanders, imagining all manner of dangers that might lie ahead. What if there are dragons? What if there are other snarling beasts she's never seen before and cannot imagine? But there is one thought that scares her more than anything else. What if it's exactly like home? The thought stops her in her tracks. She leans against the ropes, her eyes darting around, but only seeing mist. What if she travels all the way, risking everything, just to end up back where she started? The fog seems to grow denser, Now, when Sasha looks back to where she's come from, she can't see home. The only spot with a break in the mist is below her. She tries not to look down. But what if, a voice inside her whispers, what if there is something on the other side? Something different. Something exciting. Something more. That what if propels her onward. She stands up straight and puts one paw in front of the other. The bridge is less shaky now. Sasha cannot see any other animals. They have to be far ahead of her or far behind her. She keeps walking partly thankful for the fog so she doesn't have to worry about hawks. After walking for what seems like hours, she feels a jolt. The bridge sways. Her heart leaps once again into her throat. Her tail helps her regain balance, and she clings to the ropes. Without her eyes to guide her, She relies on her other senses. She hears someone coming. Out of the fog comes a figure, moving in the direction of home. It is one of the intrepid raccoons. He stops when he reaches her. Hi, Sasha says, blinking her big eyes. Hey, says the raccoon. You're heading back? I just... I can't do it anymore. The fog never lifts. Sasha nods. Good luck, the raccoon mumbles. She lets him pass and holds her breath when the bridge shakes. She waits until his paw steps recede. The bridge settles once more. Neither of them know it, but that raccoon? He made it more than halfway across the bridge. How could he know that? 
in this dense cloud, but he's almost there. Instead, he turns around, not understanding he will have to travel further heading back than he would continuing on. Sasha sits down for a moment, thrown by the raccoon's decision. Should I turn around? She murmurs. There is no one to ask. Her brothers are not there to advise her. Of course, she doesn't usually take their advice anyway. She is on her own. It is both a terrible and an exhilarating feeling. I could go back, she thinks. But what if I never find out what's on the other side? Sasha imagines the bridge snapping in a fierce storm, cutting off the path completely. She knows this might be her only chance to have a different life, to see a different place. She cannot count on this bridge always being here. That's the thing about opportunities. They don't usually hang around. Sasha stands and sighs and tries to muster some courage. She continues onward. That night, Sasha sleeps in a tight coil, hugging her tail, her mind unsettled by dark dreams. The following day, she moves through the fog, putting one paw in front of the other, her legs cramped from her awkward sleeping position. In the late afternoon, a window seems to open above her, slicing through the fog. A shaft of sunlight illuminates her, as if the sun itself is reaching down to pat her on the head. Sasha smiles, delighted to have the sun's warmth on her face. And then she hears it, the unmistakable cry of a hawk. Sasha tries to hide, to slip back into the cloud, but the sun seems to follow her. She is exposed, out in the open, with nowhere to go. She feels the hawk before she sees it. Suddenly, she is being lifted up, away, talons gripping her like a vice. Well, it was good while it lasted, Sasha mutters. The hawk carries her upwards above the fog. And for the briefest moment, Sasha sees the other side of the canyon. <gasps> it is real. It is so close. It is Sasha bites down on the hawk's leg as hard as she can. Ouch! The hawk mutters, getting angry. Sasha keeps biting. Her very life depends on it. Stop that, the hawk screeches. But mid-flight, it can do little to stop her. It tries to shift its talons, but she keeps biting. Arr. Oh, this is annoying, the hawk says, and opens its talons. Uh-oh. Sasha realizes she is about to get very familiar with the cavernous abyss. She has one more tiny look at the other side of the canyon, her heart soaring. Then she falls into the fog, plummeting downward. She is not a flying squirrel, but even so, she stretches her limbs outward, hoping, perhaps beyond reason, that she can oof. Sasha's tiny paw hits against the rope of the bridge. She swings wildly, hanging desperately to the rope with one paw. She dangles from the side of the bridge. It sways. She pants, trying to catch her breath. 
Her lungs feel like they are submerged in water. She grips the rope tightly and waits for her heart to slow and her breath to stabilize. Sasha feels the chasm beckoning her downward. Fear runs through her tail like a current through a wire. The fog is dense, blocking her view of everything except the canyon below. Sasha hangs there, her tiny paws the only things keeping her from falling. She thinks of home. She wonders what she'd be doing right now had she made a different choice. She'd be safe, warm in her nest. She'd be with her brothers. Life is fairly predictable back home. She certainly wouldn't be clinging to a rope suspended above a void in the middle of a cloud. She shakes her head, dismissing the thought. There is no other me. This is it. She's right. There is no other Sasha who has stayed. That's not the way life works. She cannot possibly know what she'd be doing back home. She isn't back home. She is on a great adventure. Just keep going, she whispers. Using all of her strength, she swings herself upwards, pulling herself up with the rope until she topples onto the bridge itself. Oof. The beam of sun that had made her so vulnerable is gone. The fog is as thick as ever. Sasha thinks back to the glimpse she'd had of the other side of the bridge, the other side of the canyon. Is it real? Has she imagined it? It had been so quick, just a glimmer. What if it was a mirage, a generous trick her mind played on her? Sasha pushes the thought from her mind. And for the first time since she's been plucked up by the hawk, she puts one paw in front of the other. As she makes her way closer and closer to her goal, Sasha passes two more creatures, a badger and a weasel, who have turned back. She thinks of the glimpse of the other side. But you might be almost there she says to the animals. They pay her no mind. It could go on forever, the badger says, her shoulders slouching under the weight of her worries. I just can't see anything, says the weasel, his eyes filled with fear. Sasha cannot understand it. They are so close. They have to be. She watches them disappear behind her into the fog the bridge shaking as they go. They'll never find out, she thinks. But I will. She keeps going. A storm comes. Rain pelts her for hours. The bridge shakes with every clap of thunder. But the storm clears. The fog remains. Soon, Sasha begins to get signs that she is close. She hears birds. She can tell they are on land because they chat and gossip. She smells trees, foliage. She can't see anything because of the cloud of fog. But all of her senses tell her what is coming. The bridge feels a little firmer. The fog opens up below her. She can see the vertical wall of the canyon approaching. For the first time in days, Sasha thinks of the other woodland creatures back home. 
There could be dragons, she thinks. She feels fear run through her. She thinks of her close call with the hawk. She thinks of Sasha's thoughts are interrupted by the fog clearing behind her. It is like someone has sliced through it with a butter knife and discarded everything behind her feet. She gazes back at the way she's come. It is dizzying. She turns fully and faces the direction of home. The bridge is endless and seems to narrow in her vision until it is just a wisp at its center point, vanishing into the expanse of the canyon. She has known she's come far. But this, what if, she thinks, what if there are no dragons? What if there is something new and different and more? And that what if that holds so much curiosity and hope and so many questions propels her forward. She turns her back on the unfathomable lengths of rope trailing behind her. She faces the fog before her. Sasha lifts her paw once more, and that is where we will leave her. Sasha does not know that when her tiny paw comes down, it will hit solid land. She does not know this is the very last step of her journey. In a moment, she will be standing on the other side of the canyon, her heart in her throat, pounding with relief, with disbelief, with every feeling that comes from accomplishing that which seems impossible. But in fact, there is so little that is truly impossible. This is something she will learn soon. We will leave her here, in the sliver of time, right before her little paw hits earth, before she leaves behind the shaking of the bridge and takes it on herself shaking with astonishment. What will she find on the other side of the bridge in this new world? She doesn't know. She can only imagine, and so can we. Is the uncertainty too much for you? Shall we take just one tiny glimpse into the future? Okay, let's peek at Sasha's new life one month from now. Oh, there she is. She's around a campfire with some new friends. Hmm, it looks like there are squirrels, chipmunks, a few raccoons from either side of the canyon. There don't seem to be any dragons or snarling beasts. Although, I suppose they could be hiding. Sasha is laughing. And what of the bridge? Is it still there? Oh, I said a glimpse, didn't I? I don't think we'll get to know the fate of the bridge. But I think we've seen enough to know that Sasha does not regret crossing it.
There are many shaky bridges to cross in life. You will encounter them. I feel like I'm always stepping onto one or another. There will be times when you are forced onto a shaky bridge, surrounded by fog, the direction from which you came blocked off by dragons or other beastly creatures, which propel you forward regardless of your wishes. But most of the time, you will have a measure of choice as to whether to step onto a bridge. You will have a choice as to whether to keep going. I would guess there are many people out there who remember each and every time they stepped onto a shaky bridge and retreated from it. They may regret the times they turned back. I know I do. Keep going. Take the next step. Find out what's on the other side. Little Stories for Tiny People is written, performed, and produced by me, Rhea Pector. My in-house tech director, Peter Kay, runs my website and puts my stories on the internet for all of you to enjoy. Thank you to Hannah for the super important reminder message at the beginning. Thank you so much to my Little Stories Premium subscribers with Little Stories Premium get more of the stories you love, and an ad-free listening experience. Find the link in the episode description or visit littlestoriespremium.com. And thank you, as always, for listening in.